Hello to you. I do hope you're well. Welcome to this GCSE Religious Studies lesson. I'm Ben Wardle and today we are continuing our look at Christian practices with a look at food banks and street pastors. So we'll be looking at the Trussell Trust food banks. There are over 1300 of their food banks across the UK providing emergency food to people in need and we'll also be looking at the Street Pastors UK organisation who care, listen and help on city streets at night. So we'll be looking at why a Christian would donate to a food bank or volunteer as a street pastor and this of course is all about putting faith into action in their local communities. So we'll be looking at the key biblical teachings which inspire this action. For example, the parable of the sheep and the goats. So let's just have a quick look at the AQA specification, shall we, which sets out everything we need to know about Christian practices. Remember, we'll be asking, answering even five questions, excuse me, on Christian practices, totaling 20 marks and so in this video we'll cover everything you need to know about food banks and street pastors and again this is all about Christians putting faith into action in their local community. So our two key words for today are food bank and street pastor. So we're going to be looking at the Trussell Trust food banks and they are inspired by Christian principles to donate food and ensure that people who are referred to their food banks can receive a minimum of three days emergency food. So a food bank is a place in a local community where people in need can go to collect food and of course we're talking about this in RS because these are often run and supported by local churches and religious charities. You know, churches might provide the space for the food bank. Many of the congregation might volunteer. And of course, many Christians are inspired by their faith to donate to and support food banks. And then we have street pastor as our second keyword. And we are looking at the organisation Street Pastors UK. And they are a Christian organisation which involves volunteers, uh, working mainly at night on city streets to give care to those who need it. So as I say, they care, listen and give help to people in need on city streets at night. So, you know, they support people, they listen to people, they provide them with lollipops and blankets as well as bottled water. Now, it's really important with street pastors that they are not preachers. So this is not about evangelism. This is about compassion. This is about basic kindness. And this is about caring for people, listening to people and helping people. For example, as I say, by providing them with a lollipop. So they are not giving out Bibles. They are not trying to convert people. They are giving out lollipops. They're giving out bottles of water and they are simply trying to help people who might be vulnerable or who might be a little bit worse for wear after a night out. So, yes, we'll be looking at why Christians would support and get involved with food banks and also as a street pastor on city streets at night. So this all falls under a topic um, which is all about the church in the local community. So in a forthcoming video, we'll be looking at the global church and how the church works internationally, for example, to help Christians facing persecution. But in this video, we're focusing on the role of the church in the local community. Now, of course, um, church attendance is declining in the UK. The number of people who identify as a Christian is declining in the UK. But nevertheless, you know, churches remain very central to the local community, don't they? The Church of England, for example, has pledged to provide a Christian presence in every community in the UK. So or in England, even. Sorry. So what do churches do in the local community? Here are just some of the things that churches do in the local community. And then, as I say, we'll look at why Christians would donate to Trussell Trust food banks or volunteer as a street pastor, uh, helping people in need on the streets at night. So in terms of what the church does, they provide a Christian presence through services and outreach work. They are a place to observe rites of passage in life. So this is quite a famous phrase. The church provides rites of passage from cradle to grave. So from baptism all the way through to your funeral, those significant life moments 
are marked within the church. So it is within the church, for example, that you might be baptised as a baby. So that's when we are celebrating your arrival into the world. You might then, of course, have your wedding ceremony in a church, which again is another significant life moment. And then, of course, as I say, after death, you will perhaps have your funeral in a church as well. So, you know, the church plays a really important role in marking these significant life moments and milestones. So, you know, the church takes you through the journey of life, if I can put it in that sense. The church obviously also has weekly services, as well as services to uh, celebrate significant occasions, such as Christmas and Easter, which, of course, we looked at in the previous video. So, you know, the church helps you to mark those important moments in your life, but it also helps you to mark those important moments in the Christian calendar. So, for example, attending church services at Christmas and at Easter. The church as well is a place for people to quietly reflect. The so people can go and pray, for example, if they're going through a difficult time. Uh, the church can provide a place for play groups and youth groups. It can be a place um, where people can go if uh, they need a warm space in the winter, for example, in a church hall. The doors might be open so people can go in and, you know, have some warmth during the winter months. There may be social groups run here. So, you know, in particular for the elderly, for example, this might be a great way to meet people and get out and about in your local community because you could attend a coffee morning at the local church hall. The church tries to bring people together for significant events. And uh, of course, it's also a place where food banks might be uh, held. So they might actually provide the facilities for a food bank to be set up so people can actually head to the local church or church hall to get those emergency food supplies if they've been referred. The church could also run educational courses as well. So the church can be a place to learn more about Christianity. Um, and an example of this is the Alpha courses, which are run by many different churches of all different denominations, where people can go and learn about the key Christian beliefs and teachings. So yes, the church, as you can see, has a very active role, doesn't it, in the local community. And we're going to be looking now at, as I say, why Christians would donate to food banks or volunteer as street pastors. And this is all about putting faith into action. So it's all about putting their Christian faith and values into action in their local community. So, of course, we want to understand, well, what is in the Bible that inspires them to do this? What does scripture say that incentivizes them to go out and donate to food banks or volunteer as a street pastor? So, of course, one of the best quotes from the Bible is the golden rule taught by Jesus to love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, that inspires Christians to care for their neighbors, to help those in need in the local community because Jesus has commanded them to love their neighbours, to treat others as they would want to be treated. And Jesus is talking here about agape love, which is this selfless, unconditional love for others. And that, of course, inspires Christians to help their neighbours, to help those in need, to donate to food banks or volunteer as a street pastor, for example. Another really important quote is from the uh, book of James, which says that faith without works is dead. And this teaches Christians that just believing in God and attending church is not enough for your salvation. You have got to perform good works as well. So they need to perform good works in order to be saved and go to heaven. So in order to achieve salvation, which, as we know, is a key purpose of Christian life, isn't it? That is the thing people are working towards. So really important to note that the book of James says faith without works is dead. So it's not enough just to believe in God. You've got to perform good works as well. So again, that inspires Christians to donate to food banks and volunteer as street pastors. Another really important quote is from St. Paul, who said to clothe yourselves with compassion. So compassion is a key Christian value and a key Christian principle. And so Christians are taught by St. Paul to be compassionate. So, you know, they are inspired by this to care for those in need and to show sympathy towards those in need. And again, that's going to inspire them, isn't it, to donate to food banks, for example, or volunteer as a street pastor, because St. Paul has written to 
clothe yourselves with compassion, to care for those in need, to have sympathy for those who are suffering and then do something to help them. Now, we're going to focus in today's video on a very important piece of scripture, and it's called the parable of the sheep and the goats, hence the little picture of a farmyard there for you. And this is one of the most famous parables. And this parable is taught by Jesus in Matthew 25. And he teaches in this parable that going to heaven is the reward for good works. So he teaches that those who help people in this world, so those, for example, who feed the hungry and care for the sick, those people who have helped others will be rewarded by God with eternal life. And so this is a really important uh, parable when it comes to faith in action, because it inspires Christians to help those in need because they are told doing so will be rewarded. And the key line really is from this parable when Jesus says, the righteous will have eternal life. So in this parable, Jesus teaches that those who help those in need will be rewarded with eternal life in heaven. So of course, this inspires Christians to help others in their local community because they are told this will be rewarded by God. So Let's have a quick read of this parable, shall we? Because it is really, really important that we are making reference to this parable if we are writing about Christians helping others. Whenever you are writing about Christians helping others, always be linking it back to the parable of the sheep and the goats, which teaches Christians that helping those in need will be rewarded with eternal life in heaven. So, Jesus taught this, that when the son of man comes in his glory, so on the day of judgment and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people. So he will judge them from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep who are the people who have helped others on the right and the goats who have not done anything to help others on the left. Then the king, so God, will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So the kingdom of God, heaven, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. So these are the key good works which are rewarded with eternal life in heaven. So feeding the hungry, giving a drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, uh, inviting strangers in, caring for the sick and visiting those in prison. So these are outlined as those six important works of mercy that will be rewarded by God on the day of judgment. So the righteous people will then answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. Now, that is a really important line, because what Jesus is saying here is that whatever you have done, for the poorest, most vulnerable in society, you have effectively done for him or you have done to him. So what he is saying is that the people in need, they matter. Their lives have value. Their lives have worth. And you will be judged based on how you have treated those people. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So Jesus here aligning himself with the poorest and most vulnerable in society. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So these people are going to go to hell. The ones who haven't helped other people, who haven't performed good works are going to hell. He says, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. And they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, 
you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So, of course, the key teaching, the key message of this parable is that performing good works will be rewarded by God. And so Christians are inspired to help those in need in their local community, for example, by donating to food banks or volunteering as a street pastor. Because Jesus has said that when he was hungry, you gave me something to eat. So, you know, that is a great quote to use when you are talking about food banks. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you invited me in. So that idea of helping those in need, for example, somebody who is on the street and they are vulnerable, they might be upset, for example, just speaking to them, having a, car, a kind, compassionate conversation with them is showing a, a welcoming uh, side to you isn't it it's welcoming them it's showing them that they're not alone um I was sick and you looked after me I was in prison and you visited me and again it's that key idea that whatever you did for the least of these you did for me so Christians have a duty they are taught by Jesus to care for those who are in need to you know be there for those who are going through a difficult time and to help them by performing these good works for them so we're going to look at two case studies now of how Christians do this. As I say, we're going to look at the Trussell Trust food banks and we're going to look at Street Pastors UK. And for both of these case studies, we're going to ask three questions. We're going to ask, who are they? We're going to ask, what do they do? And we're going to ask, why do they do this? And of course, that's where we're going to link back to our biblical quotes and the parable of the sheep and the goats. So if you have downloaded the PowerPoint, you might like to actually print this slide off and then fill it in as we go through, because we will start now with the Trussell Trust, which is our Christian case study for food banks. So the Trussell Trust is based on, shaped and guided by Christian principles. So it exists because they have been inspired by the Christian teachings. These values have strong roots in the Christian teaching and practice. And those values are compassion. Remember, St. Paul said, clothe yourselves with compassion. Justice, remember God is a God of justice. Community, remember that idea from St. Paul that all are one in Christ. And dignity, and that links in with the Imago Dei doctrine. So the Trussell Trust are inspired by, and they are driven by, key Christian teaching and practice. So that is why they do what they do. And what they do is operate more than 1,300 food bank centres across the UK, which provide a minimum of three days worth of nutritionally balanced emergency food, um, which supports people who have been referred. So people will be given a referral and then they can go to one of these food banks and receive a minimum of three days emergency food. The Trussell Trust also works to support and advise people in terms of how to maximise their incomes and lift themselves out of poverty. So they provide that immediate support, but they then also work with people over a longer period of time so that they can lift themselves out of poverty and then they can, you know, get their lives back together, no matter what has happened in the past. So the Trussell Trust say that across the UK, food banks offer vital support to people in crisis. And they say churches are at the heart of this work, generously providing venues, volunteers, leadership, donations and more. So in terms of the role of the church and Christians, they are donating food items. They might be opening up their buildings for the food bank to use and, of course, providing volunteers as well. So the only question left really is why do churches do this? And of course, this is where we're going to link in the parable of the sheep and the goat. For example, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Uh, and also St. Paul's teaching to clothe yourselves with compassion. It's about showing compassion, care, sympathy and concern for those who are in need in your local community. So churches do this to put gospel values such as compassion into action. It's all about putting Jesus's teaching into practice. And of course, I'm talking there about the parable of the sheep and the goats, as well, of course, as the quote to love your neighbor as yourself. It puts their faith into action as well. They believe in an omnibenevolent God. So it's about showing that love, that agape, that unconditional selfless love for all of God's creation. And it's about as well showing love kindness and compassion so again it's putting those key values into practice so our second case study then is street pastors uk so again this 
is a uh, voluntary organization and it is where Christians go out onto city streets at night to care, listen and help people, to support people, to give out freebies such as uh, lollipops, water and blankets. But again, remember, they're not evangelizing. They are caring. They are helping. They are listening, but they are not trying to convert you. So. A street pastor is someone from the Christian community who is willing to care, listen and help, particularly people who have found themselves disenfranchised or marginalised from society. A street pastor is willing to engage with people in an open and non-judgmental manner, whatever their situation. The street pastor is there to get to know people in the community and to build relationships in order to find out their needs and offer support or guidance. Street pastors work to gain the credibility of the community so that the community knows that the church has come to them and so on a typical patrol so on a typical evening street pastors could be involved with helping to calm aggressive situations supporting vulnerable people listening to people who want or need to talk giving out flip-flops to people so they um you know if they've taken off their high heels for example they don't get any broken glass stuck in their foot uh, after their night out uh, they would give bottles of water to people who might have had one drink too many and maybe a little bit dehydrated uh, give out blankets to people who may be at risk of hypothermia and they might help to clear out uh, or clear up even the streets. So they would clear away broken or discarded bottles or glass to remove potential weapons or sources of injury. And they also give out lots of lollipops. And the idea here is that they help to reduce tension and actually build friendships. And, uh, you know, they're doing that one chupa chup at a time, aren't they? So, you know, it's a nice little icebreaker kind of thing. Uh, so their focus is on talking to people who might be lonely, stressed or despondent. Um, and they see that as one of the greatest opportunities they have. So, yes, street pastors are Christians who go out onto city streets at night to care, listen and help people, for example, by giving out water or giving out blankets, as well as, course, of course, even as those lollipops. So again, another example of putting faith into action, being inspired by the parable of the sheep and the goats, being inspired by St. Paul, being inspired by Jesus, and they are going out into the community and living out their Christian values. They're putting their Christian principles into practice. So in terms of uh, the exam, we, of course, need to prepare for all of the different types of question we could get on food banks and street pastors. So here's an example question, and it says, explain two reasons why Christians help in their local community. Refer to scripture in your answer. So of course, this is asking us, why do they, for example, volunteer for a food bank or as a street pastor? So why do they help others in their local community? And of course, this is a great five marker to get because it is all about scripture. Because remember, with faith in action, it's all about putting the teachings of the Bible and the Christian principles into practice. So with a five marker, what you need to do is obviously explain two reasons and explain means go into detail by giving a reason and or example. And of course, for that fifth mark, you need to make explicit reference to scripture by saying something like this is found in the Bible, which teaches Christians or this is seen in St. Paul's letters, which instruct Christians. So what I thought we could do is have a look through now a couple of quotes that we've actually mentioned today and actually develop our explanation skills. So we're going to explain in quite a bit of detail here. You wouldn't need this much detail in a five marker. But what I want us to practice is explaining in detail different quotes from the Bible and how they inspire Christian actions in their local communities. So the first quote is the golden rule to love your neighbour as yourself. And this inspires Christians because Jesus commands Christians to love their neighbours as themselves. He is referring here to agape love, which is selfless and unconditional love for others. And that, of course, involves caring for them. This inspires Christians to care for their neighbours and to help them. He also says in his parable of the sheep and the goats, whatever you did for the least of these, 
you did for me. So in this parable, Jesus teaches that whatever someone has done for the least of people in society, the poorest, the most vulnerable, for example, they have done for him. And so they should care for those most in need and treat them well. Remember, everybody's made imago Dei in the image of God. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, he said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And of course, that inspires Christians to donate to food banks, because in this parable, Jesus outlines six works that Christians should perform and teaches that they will be rewarded for performing them. So doing these things will secure your salvation. It will result in reward from God. So that obviously inspires Christians to, for example, donate to food banks. Jesus also said in the parable uh, that the righteous will have eternal life. So he is teaching that those who have helped others will be rewarded with eternal life. This teaches Christians that salvation is earned through good works. They should therefore work to help others in order to go to heaven after death. St. Paul then, he said, clothe yourselves with compassion, didn't he? And that teaches Christians they should be compassionate to others. This means they should have sympathy and concern for those who are suffering, such as those without food. And this should inspire Christians to help these people. So, for example, they would donate to food banks because of their compassion for those who are unable to afford food for themselves and their families. And then finally, from the book of James, that brilliant quote, that faith without works is dead. So this teaches Christians that just having faith in Jesus Christ is not enough. They must put his teachings into action and perform good works as well. This inspires them to help others in their local community, for example, through food banks or as street pastors. So hopefully that has helped you in terms of understanding how those key quotes from the Bible in Christian action in their local community. So all that's left is to have a look at our consolidation questions. So how much do we now know about Christian action in the local community through uh, food banks and as street pastors? So number one, give two ways that Christians help Trussell Trust food banks. So what might they do? Number two, give two things that street pastors do on their night shifts. Number three, give one thing that street pastors do not do on their night shifts. Number four, can you summarize in one sentence? So, you know, maybe on one post-it note, the key message in the parable of the sheep and the goats. And then finally, number five, can you give a quote from the Bible that inspires Christians to help in the local community? And that brings to an end today's lesson. Thank you for joining me. I do hope that's been helpful. Very best wishes for your studies. Have a good day. Bye-bye.